All right, this week we're going to look at making an image maker, and this is sort of a meme maker. And in doing this, we're going to be able to use all that we've learned so far about variables, data structures, logic, and object objects and object-oriented programming. So let's start by forking this uh, repo from SU Web Dev to our local uh, account. And while that's forking, I will show you what this image maker can do for us. Uh, so let's say I'm going to choose Picard. So you kind of have this background image and then you notice that when I changed it I got this image. I also have dogs. Fry. There's a, I leave it to you to play with and there's stretch goals to add even more images. But I'm going to start with Picard and I'm going to type in some text here. And you notice when I tab out of that, it puts my text up on top of the image. So a Picard quote, things are only possible until they're not. Um, and then I basically have a meme. And there is this option to download the image and it will create a JPEG. Okay, so that's, a, that's what we're going to be working on. And in working on this, we're going to learn about the DOM and DOM manipulation. So we're going to be able to um, change the DOM dynamically and programmatically. When this kind of ability first came out, it was called dynamic HTML, but it's, it's the, our, our abilities out there are, have greatly increased. So let's uh, go open up this project. Well, let's see. We're going to go to our image maker, clone this, let's see, get clone our image maker and then open it up in our VS Code environment. And we're going to take a look at what we've got here before we start working on it. So we've got some JavaScript, we've got some images, we've got some CSS, um, and under JavaScript, we've got this DOM to image, which is a minified JavaScript file. Um, and that is, we are not coding that. That is actually some code that we're going to just, a library we're just bringing in. And then we've got our main JS, which has a set of to dos. But before we get into coding, let's take a look at our index HTML. So, because we're going to be modifying the DOM. We want to have a really good understanding of what the DOM is. So the DOM is the acronym for Document Object Model, and it defines a, an object that is an instance of this um, code that we've written. So you might now consider that your index HTML, your HTML is data that is interpreted, that is like input into a constructor that creates a model, so an instance of a template that defines what a web page is. And to show you what that model looks like, I created this document object model DOM uh, picture in this is Dryo that shows us the objects that we have. And this is specific to this particular code. So I've taken this code, this is my data that is being used to construct a model. And it basically have the document, which is the formal container for all other elements or objects within the DOM. And it starts, and, the, and we know we have this document doc type up here that kind of is used to define for the browser what version of HTML we're using. But this kind of sets up a document and then we have the HTML element, which, are, which is our root. And then under HTML, we have a head. 
and that has a title and an image maker. Now I didn't include all of these elements just to save space in this so we could see more of this model. Uh, then after the head, so if I roll that up, I've got the body, which is a container for um, another set of elements where we have a form container and an image preview. So we have two kind of a break there between our form container and image preview. And notice these are using IDs because this is a place where we really need IDs because we, we want to have unique chunks of HTML that we will um, access from inside our code. So we have IDs for these two sections and then under the form we will define an actual form tag and this is new you didn't really study this much in your in your beginning class and we have these paragraphs which set up labels and input so these are the uh, elements inside the form and then we have a submit button in my model here I show the form and I only show the submit again just for brevity um, because this submit is going to we're going to set this up to be a button so we're going to be able to allow the user to interact with the DOM on that and we'll see how we can attach listeners and then process uh, that handle those submit listeners with a function uh, and then we have this image preview which right now doesn't have anything in it so looking back over here nothing in there but you'll see that that is where we will be able to um, append elements to change what we see in the DOM. So this is all we can interact with all of these elements through our JavaScript code. And I think in this particular assignment, you really bring together everything you've learned as far as HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to enable you to create something that is um, changeable you know it's you can it respond and change your your html your styles all kinds of things just using your javascript so let's take a look at doing that uh, by following the to do's in our main js all right, so before we start coding and follow, you know, just stepping through and coding, let's uh, look at the structure of this JS. Um, it's going to be somewhat familiar. You've got a number of to-dos, and then at the bottom you've got a section that says you don't need to change this unless you're doing a stretch that requires it. But I'm going to look at this a little bit closer too. Uh, but in your um, main JS, you have a class defined image maker. It has a constructor. And you're going to be doing some um, some setup there in the constructor to initialize uh, this class, um, and then you have a function called draw preview. And so again, you're going to be doing some code that will implement drawing to the to the screen, and then you have this download image which calls a couple of functions. So when you Call download image. That was that button I clicked at the end. It's going to call the draw preview, which we're we're going to write, and then it's going to call the generate image, which is written for you. And this generate image takes advantage of DOM to image, which is that library that we we pulled in. So we're not writing the code to do the download. We uh, but we will just call for it. Now this is kind of interesting. The apply event listeners. Uh, we're not writing this. We're going to learn how to do this in the next assignment. But this is this is code that will um, attach listeners to objects on the screen. So inputs, selects, text area. Anytime we have a change event on those things, we will call a function. And it just so happens we'll be calling draw preview. So that's how we get that effect that when I leave a form field that that f triggers a change event, fires it off, and then I get a draw preview. So the change gets shown in the 
image um, you know, on the page. So we won't be writing that, but uh, this is really good to look at and, and to understand. Our big understanding this for this um, code that we're writing is in working with these two document functions. So document is our class, that is our document object, and we have query selector and query selector all. And so what you want to really understand is the difference between those and how to use them. And um, I think it's also useful for you to understand how they relate to jQuery, because we've all experienced jQuery through working with Bootstrap, or maybe on your own you've been doing some work with it. It was a phenomenal improvement to the JavaScript that we were working with back when jQuery came out, which for me was, I think I remember starting to work with it in about 2010, but I think it was out before that. But yes, it was a library that came out that made us able to turn our, to actually work with our DOM as an object in JavaScript. So let's look at how, yeah, how that works. It turns out that Chrome allows you to run jQuery. So if you remember back in the index.html, I have these two ID'd containers. So in jQuery, jQuery uses this dollar. It's actually for jQuery, it is a alias for the actual jQuery. So when you run dollar, it's a function name uh, Jake for, that is an alias for typing in jQuery. Now, we cannot run jQuery as a function in our Chrome console, but we can run the alias. So I can create, so the way it works is you have a function and the parameter is one or more essentially CSS selectors. So you're used to working with CSS selectors now, if you, let me see, did I get that? Image preview. Ah, I used a dot, but this is an ID, so I want to use a hash. So I can actually test out my selectors inside of jQuery. So if I hit that, you can see it pulls back this it shows me that it has found it and it's got it and then I am able to find all sorts of properties and functions on that object. So I can do this and I can actually, just the same way I can play around with CSS in the Chrome Dev Tools, I can play around with JavaScript in the console, I can play around with selecting from the DOM model in here. So we do have that dollar, but you're not going to want to use that in your code. These are, that, that dollar selector is based on calling actual JavaScript um, functions. And in the latest JavaScript, we have these functions, J, document jQuery selector. And this one will select a single item. So even if I pass in a um, something where like I have a if I if I passed in a class that had multiple instances of the class it will only select the first instance. Um, as it turns out in, in, in our in our code here we don't have multiple classes but I'll, let me just add one so that you can see how that works. So if I had, let's say, a class called test in here. So I decided that I needed to add some style and I, I created a new class and added it in there. And if I ran jQuery, let's, oh wait, let's do this over in here. So let's run this in our live server. So we're, we're, we're modifying this. This is not something that we need to do for this assignment, but just to demo what you can do if you, just to help you understand the difference between jQuery selector and jQuery select all. So there are two functions that you want to become very familiar with here. 
jQuery selector all and jQuery selector. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to demonstrate the, the difference, which is noticeable when you have a class. Because with selector, you will always only get one object back. So you can immediately start calling functions on it. Um, you can call click events, you can call blur events. So you, the point is you'll get one function, whereas if I use selector all, I will get back an array. Okay, so now I get back two nodes because it's going to bring me back all instances that it finds of this test of elements with this test class. Now that goes even with IDs. So if I use selector on um, image preview, and notice that you're always putting these in strings. So these are just plain old CSS selectors. Um, I will only get back the one. There is only one. But if I use selector all, I will always get back an array. So even though there's only one, the selector all always returns array. Selector always returns the first one it finds, and only one. And so if I wanted to get at that preview, like right now, this is an array. So using the dot, I'm going to get array functions, not functions that affect this element. But if I call the zero, so because I know there's only one in it, and I grab the first one, now I get functions related to this element, that this div element. All right, so that's, that's just an important kind of lesson about working with selector and selector all. And then to just help you see the different, that these are sort of replacements for that dollar, the jQuery function. And they allow us to do all of this uh, selection from the DOM and thereby giving us access to properties and functions that we can apply with just basic vanilla JavaScript. All right, so knowing that, let's, let's now take a look at what we need to do in this, um, for this assignment. All right, we're ready to start coding. We have done some analysis of our DOM. We know um, what uh, elements are already in there. We know that we're going to be adding some new elements and then we're going to be modifying some of what you see up there. So let's see how that works. First of all, we want to get this object uh, instantiated, this uh, image preview. So that is going to be the, this is right now down here, there's nothing in it. This is going to be what we see. So we have this form. Now, yeah, and by the way, looking at the CSS, you can see that we've used some, um, the form container is using some absolute positioning within the body to place it up in the corner. And then behind it, we kind of have this image preview. And we've got some absolute positioning in there for the top text and bottom text classes. But we don't actually have that top text and bottom text on here. That top text there is a, is, is a for, a for attribute for the form, but we don't have anything in our image preview yet. So we're going to be creating some new elements and adding them to that. And even though we do have some styles set up for them. So we're going to start here with the image preview. And we're going to, it exists, it's ID, there's only one. So we're going to use query selector and image preview. So that should get us an instance of that image preview that we're trying to load up. Now we're going to create a new element P that is going to contain that top text. So it's going to take the top text out of the form and put it into this image preview. And so to do that we are going to say document create element and P. And then we are going to do this dot top text and we're going to add an attribute. So remember the attributes are they appear inside of an element tag and they always have a quoted value. We're going to create a class attribute. So this is how we're going to add that class to this new paragraph. And then we're going to 
take this new paragraph and add it to image preview and we're going to use the append child function that will attach it right onto that element and this dot top text so that is how we're going to take that create this new paragraph and get it into our image preview and then bottom text is going to be something similar we're going to create another element another paragraph paragraph and nope create create element and then we're going to do bottom text equals we're probably going to set the attribute Actually, this should be set attribute, set attribute, and it's going to be the class that we're going to use for bottom text. You can already see there's some work you could do as far as stretch to modify how these things all appear on the screen because you've, you've got some classes there to work with in CSS. And then we're going to do this image preview and child. So we call it a child because this is a hierarchical structure and so as we append we're appending it underneath it. I mean you could picture uh, a sideways append, a sibling append, that would be a little bit different or you know but we're appending to the parent this dot bottom text. Okay so this is just we, we've taken that new paragraph that we've created just like we did up here and we're We've added a class to it and now we're appending it to the bottom or to the image preview. So the next thing we want to do is to get, we want to go to our forms and we want to uh, select the element that has the name, uh, that has the attribute. We want to select the input element with the name background image. So again, we are going to use the query selector forms zero. Now notice we have to specify zero. That's because document forms returns an array of forms. That's how it's set. That's what it's set up to do because you can have more than one form on a page. Uh, in our case, we only have one form, so we'll just grab the first one. And since we count from zero, it's form zero and we're going to call a query selector on that and with forms we're going to use an advanced selector um, that is going to allow us to look at the name so with forms we don't we don't usually identify the input elements with id or class but rather with name and this is related to how servers process forms uh, normally, pro form processing is done in servers, but when we introduced doing this to JavaScript, we needed a way to get at name. So name is just the standard way that you set up form um, for processing. So take a look again at the forms. You can see we have this form, and it has a label and an input. So these go together, and so the four attribute specifies the name of the form. So we don't use IDs and that's really uh, carries on from the fact that normally forms would be processed on servers and servers look at the names to pull out the, the data, the values. Um, and value here, if I, if I set that, it would be the default value for that input. The placeholder sets that kind of background it, it's not going to get recorded as data the way that value would but it just kind of gives some instruction to the user and it's important to include that for for usability but um, so we, we need to we need to select based on name and we do have a, a selector that'll let us do that and here it is the select name equals background image so you can see that we are pulling out this this right here uh, this select we probably haven't dealt with select either so select will create a drop down box and it uses options to, to load that box so when the user selects something one of those options is going to become available to us by selecting the name 
um, from the forms. So that gets us our image because we want to see what they've chosen for the background image. And then the next one, we want to get the top text input from the form. And so we're going to say document dot forms again form zero. This is going to be similar to what we did above. Query selector. This is where it can get easy to make typos. Let's see. Select name equals top text. And notice how I need to work with single quotes and double quotes differently because name is an attribute, so it's going to be double quoted. But I am in a selector, so I'm going to use single quotes so that I don't have to deal with the fact that I'm nesting quotes inside a quote because that wouldn't work. Double quotes can't be nested in double quotes, has to be single quotes. So just keep that in mind. And then document, so we're going to also select the bottom here. So we'll get the forms zero query selector select name equal. And, and this is something that experience will give you. It's setting up and you can Google, you know, to find out more too, how to, how to get some of these selectors. Some of them aren't always obvious, but this will make you a better CSS programmer too. Um, but that's how we get the data out of the forms. So this is a lot of code, a lot of typing, and you're going to see next quarter when we get into um, working with uh, frameworks that a lot of this can be taken care of for us by our framework. But it's good to see what the underlying work is in getting the data out of a form and then putting it into taking that data and uh, having a place to put it onto another place in the page. So, um, so right now, what we've done is we've managed to extract data from, a, we have a constructor, so when the, that, for this image maker, so when you call new image maker, that it's going to be able to put together all of these objects. Uh, it's going to add some new elements to the page, and it's going to get some input out of forms. All right. And you can see here, though, if you want to, you can add more fields to that form. So if you want to give the user, until now you've only used prompts to be able to get input from users, but now you've got a new way to do it through a form. And so if there's more options that you want to provide your user, you can add more fields to the form. You know, just follow sort of the pattern that you see where you have a, a paragraph, a label, and an input. Uh, and then you uh, pick that data out of your form. So you definitely would want to be sure that you're putting this within the form tag. So it's part of the form element here, nested. But you can add more options to this application. Um, all right, so the next thing is the draw preview function. So we're still inside of this image maker. We've got the constructor coded. Now we want to do draw preview. So this is what's going to happen whenever the user changes a form field. Like I pointed out, we have this apply listeners, and this thing is, is listening for a change on any input, select, or text area. And so this you have to think of listeners as just little processes that run in an infinite loop, but they can be interrupted by for by an event in the DOM that they are programmed to listen to. So this is kind of different than a lot of languages. Not all languages are event driven, but this is really one special thing about working with um, in some of the GUI, some of the other languages that do, do deal with GUIs will have event listeners because they need to. You, you're, you've got to set up a way for the program to be ready to intercept any event that gets fired. And so what happens is these particular elements are listening for a change event. And when they get it, they are going to take an instance of ImageMaker and call this draw preview function. 
All right, so we're going to code this. Um, so what we want to do is basically update that background image, update the top text and the bottom text. And if you've added more options, you might be having to up, add some more statements in here to do some more updates. But we're going to be able to call on our image preview object and set the background image. So it's similar to what we would do, let's see, this style, oh, we need to, we're going to change the style, background, image, did I call it background, oh, I called it, back, oh, I wanted to call this background image. So not background input, but background image. So now, yes, it should find background image. Yep. So, I'm, so that's the nice thing about working with you know these objects is that your your IDE can detect that and help you to to keep things the way that you intend them. So I'm saying that I want to change the style of this background image that um, that I pulled out of the form. So I. Oh, I'm going to change the style of the image preview and its background image. And this here is, is, is something to note. So you know that when you're in CSS, the way that you do background image is you say background dash image. Well, in code, we don't use dash, so that kebab casing, you know. We use camel casing in code. So this is a, you learned about, you know, snake casing camel kebab casing and now camel casing is what's using code so what you'll often see is that a property like this that has a dash in CSS becomes camel cased in code so that's something just to keep in mind that's pretty standard um, and then we are gonna use some interpolation and we're gonna say images so we're gonna pull our image out of the images folder so all these images that we've supplied options for in our form have a matching image and we've set it up so that the name in the form the value that you get out of the option matches the name of the file so we can say this dot background input dot value so the background input we pulled from the form uh, let's see, background, wait, this should be background input is what we pulled from the form. And this background image refers to the background image that we want to specify for the style. So sorry if that got a little confusing. We still, this is still called background input. So we're collecting our inputs from the form. We're using that background input object that we pulled out of the form. We're getting its value, and that is what we're going to use to pick this up. So let's just take a look at this. We have a quote mark there. So. This, is, this can get kind of tricky as far as typing. So I want to just kind of review this. Of course, we'll just see an error and have to debug it if it doesn't work. But we've got the image preview. That's our object that is where our new code will end up on the page, our new HTML. Style, we're pulling its style property out. And then out of the style pro property, style, well, it's actually style object, we have a property background image which relates to the CSS background image. And we're going to give it a string, which will be URL images dollar this. Ah, this is my problem. This, so we need to, we're interpolating this dot background input dot value. Okay, so this background input has a number of properties and value is the one that will this is the one that is the selected value from our select options and so essentially this will give us like um, 
the value that we pull out of the here. So you can see that the values are set up here and these match the names of the images. So that is how that is all kind of, and that's all part of design work is to come up with how am I going to map what they choose to what I'm going to do with it. So that is where all of that comes from. And then uh, that looks pretty good. And if it's not good, we will certainly see it in the debugger. So the next thing we're going to do is set the top text inner H. So the inner HTML refers to that what goes inside this HTML. So remember this dot top text, we created this paragraph and we can set the text in it by using inner HTML. Um, this dot top text input value. So, so we're taking this input that we pulled out of the form, we're setting it into the inner HTML of our new top text paragraph. Same thing for bottom text. Inner HTML equals this dot bottom text, the input value. So that loads everything up. Uh, and then we get this predefined, so we're still in this, um, you know, image maker class. We're given download image. We don't have to change this, but we notice that when you call download image, it calls download, it calls draw preview, which uh, takes all the data out of our uh, form and assigns it to the new paragraphs and to the background image that is in our new code. Um, and then generate image. Again, we're not writing that. Uh, that is provided, but you may need to modify that if you add more options to your form and you need that to be reflected because this is what's going to uh, create. And you can see it comes with parameters that are that have default values. These as stretch goals could be changed, but for, for getting this going, we're not going to mess with any of this. Um, but you can see we're, we're creating a new element using this ID. Or actually, we're doing a get element because that ID exists on the page already. But we're changing the style height width. We're going to uh, create an image name called, and we're going to take date now, so we're going to, that's going to give it a unique name. Um, this is for setting up the download. So we have that optional download the image. And this uses the DOM to image. So this is the DOM to image interface. And this is what it needs in order to be able to run its code. And we provide it. It's kind of something you haven't seen. We have this then. And, and this is actually a promise. You're going to learn more about this in the promises in the next quarter. But promises are a way to deal with asynchronous callbacks. It's a new way newer way to deal with them. So like the fact is is that when and you can see there's that any time like when we add these event listeners we add something we add the event as a string and then we add a function and we, we call these functions callbacks because they get called later in time like we're just providing them they're almost they are they're they are a an object that that is a function and they, they don't have a name so normally you know your your typical function that you would write would have a syntax function name and parameter list in parentheses these functions don't have a name they still have a parameter so they're called anonymous functions and they work and they operate as callbacks and we'll be learning a lot more about this but for this assignment they are provided for you and we have this kind of anonymous function that is dealing with for the DOM to image. So no need to spend a lot of time figuring out how DOM to image works. It's given to you kind of as a way to entice you to enjoy this program. But and to and to get you looking at how you can bring in these kind of libraries. So you can see um, in the head here we we bring in through the script source that DOM to image, and it's already written for us. We just uh, have downloaded it and made it available. And notice we we 
bring this script tag in before main because we need this to be available before we can start making calls on it. And this is just standard operating procedure for bringing in for, for bringing in multiple script tags is to think about what functions need to be defined first. That got very tricky toward, you know, as we got more and more complicated as we moved into writing enterprise apps with JavaScript. And you'll see when we talk about frameworks next quarter that it's been dealt with in some very innovative ways. So, uh, but for now, we just want to make sure that I've defined this DOM to image before I define main. All right, so let's see if this works. So we're going to go ahead and run this with live server. And hi, I'm here. And notice I don't get my dog until I make a change. And that's because the event listener set off. And I'm not getting my doggy anyway, so uh, I've got a problem here. Let's take a look in the console. OK, a couple things. Cannot reach property value of null. So this dot top text not equal to null. Now I'm thinking top text input. Ah, this dot top text. Okay, let's make sure that this dot top text got loaded in there. So we have, let's just step over that. It looks like we do have top text in there, so let's go down here and we'll say hi. And that triggered an event which called the draw preview. Um, and this dot top text seems to be there. Inner HTML is empty right now. Top text input. So our top text input is null. So let's put breakpoint there. I'll just let this run. I'll refresh it. I have to refresh it to run the constructor because that is, by the way, yeah, that is getting called right here, the new. So that's part of our code that was provided for us. So that's back in here. We have, this is the only thing that just runs. Everything else is kind of a template, but we call new image maker um, once we've defined the class. So we are going to run this constructor and we're running we're wondering about getting this top text ah create a new element and then we're wondering about this top text input so let's just take a look at all of these and see that they've been filled in so we got a top text element that we've created and we have appended it. We've got a bottom text and we've appended it. We've got a background input and all the options are there. Now top text, so we're saying document form select name equals top text. And let's just see, did we pull that out? That was null, so we have a problem in there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop the tape for a minute and take a look and I'll be right back. All right, so I'm running through this again, and I'm trying to figure out what did I do wrong. And by golly, I it is a typo. And it took me a while to figure it out because it's a typo, and it's sort of like I was being very efficient with copy and paste. But in this case, the problem is I'm, I'm referencing the wrong form type. So in the case of the background input, remember I had a select tag, so I want to use select name as background image. But in the case of the, these, um, these input types, I need to use an input selector. So let's take a look at that HTML again so you can see how you figure that out. So um, with the select, I want to do select and then in square brackets, this name equals background image. But for this tab, actually for this uh, bottom text name, it's an input type. So I need to use that in my selector. So the fix is in here when I'm doing these uh, select from the form, these need to be input, not select. So these, this CSS selection by name needs to use the type 
of element it is to make that work. So let's try that again. Let's stop that and we'll go back and run our live server. And let's just open this inspector up so I can see if it throws any errors down there. So um, again, I change. I'm going to turn my debugger off and just by this is a toggle on the debugger so I can have my debug statements but not actually stop on them but I'm really concerned on the console but you can see I left that and it posted high and I'm just going to say there so I got my two top and bottom text and then um, I need to do a change to trigger the event that will put something there so I will do fry okay and that did not work either so let's take a look at what might be going on there because changing this should change my background image I'm not getting any errors I probably have some sort of a typo let's take a look in here so again debugging it does it is the time consuming so I'll turn the debugger back on I'm not concerned about this now what I'm concerned about is that I am not getting my uh, image changed and we know that we pulled that image out let's see this background input so we selected name background image and we um, we got the name there so we want to make sure that that is happening that we're pulling that name out and then we actually assign, let's see, that's where we do the assignment and draw preview. This is where we get it. So let's just see what happens. Uh, we'll let this refresh. And background input. Okay, so there's um, nothing going on there right now. Let's just say we're really concerned about, we choose a new image. So that should fire. We fire the event that calls draw preview. Let's go ahead and make sure that this pulled out what we thought it should. So I'll go to the console and I'll just paste that in. And that looks like images slash fry. So URL images. Do we have an extra parentheses there? It kind of looks like we do. And this is where sometimes those interpolated strings can get kind of messy. So let me go take a look at that again. Because um, interpolation basically, there's no syntax checking in there. So let's take that out. So we really need, we need a matching paren for this URL. This is just kind of what we've done in setting background images in CSS. And then we need to pull that out. Okay, so let's, let's go try that again. So this is live server, so let's just run that, get that through, refresh. Okay, so now I don't really care about this right now. I want to pick fry. And let's see. Okay, that works. So I had a typo in my interpolated uh, text very easy to do because the syntax and then you won't get a console error on that the syntax checker doesn't care what you put in your tick marks it'll put out whatever you put there so um let's just make sure this is running now let's refresh this and we'll just say hi oh notice i got my dog without even having to choose it okay and then i have hi there and my download so notice it it's going to let's go see it in the finder remember how it used that date now to create the name so that just makes sure it creates a unique name so you're not getting that prompt from your operating system about overwriting or what so anyway i think we've got this now and um just to be sure that you are able to see what we what we've done because there have been a few typos and some debugging. 
Let's just review the code that we've actually written here. And then I would encourage you to look at the stretch goals for this assignment and try to enhance it just to help you see. Be sure, and once you get the base class running, check it in. In fact, let's go ahead and check this in. So git add dot git commit dash m uh, and code git push. OK, so we, we've got that going. Um, now, if you have time, you, and I really recommend it, you can add images, you can change CSS, you can ask for background colors, foreground colors, add properties. It will help to, you to understand what you've done here. But let's just review what we did. We have, we have created, we've filled out the image maker so that when we call new image maker, our constructor calls and loads up all of the things we need. And, and um, we've taken advantage of some event listeners that were already set up for us. And we also took advantage of this generate image, which allowed us to download this, this image. So let's look inside. So basically, we got some object representations of our DOM here with the image preview. And we, then we uh, created some new paragraphs and added them to that image preview. Um, we, you know, applied classes to them. And then we pulled some data out of a form um, that we could use to, in our draw preview, we could use it to change what was in the image preview um, using a scheme we set up to map selections out of a, out of a select element to images that are in our image folder. And then we just took uh, strings out of the form and put them into our top and bottom text. All right, well, I think this is a really good project. And, you know, spend some time if you need, you know, cleaning it up, documenting it using good docu documents or um, good comments that kind of explain, like you could summarize this whole section, you know, that you are creating so a new paragraph in the image preview element. So, you know, just that kind of comment can be really useful. And um, enjoy. Uh, this could be, you can, uh, you actually have your own meme maker here. No need to go look for memes uh, out on the web. You can just make them yourself. All right. Happy coding. Uh, I'll just finish this off now by uh, getting the getting this, so I've checked in the code and I want to get it running out on my repo here, out on my account. So let's go to settings and we're going to choose master branch, save it. And because I'm using my DNS, I'm gonna use the enforce HTTPS and then I'm just gonna wait for it to publish and so this is part of testing too, you know, this is like the, the integrated testing when you're, you know, first we were doing sort of, you know, local unit type testing and now we're out here making sure that it deploys. And so we have, let's just do our simple test out here. Yay. Okay. Looks good. Downloads working. All right. That's it. Have a good week.